In this lecture, I will talk about certain different drugs that can work against this HIV virus and more specifically, it creates problem for the HIV so that it can't replicate efficiently, right? Now, if we talk about this particular problem AIDS, we know that we don't really have a permanent solution for this problem, but we can use certain different drugs to slow its progress, to halt its progress to stop or slow down the replicative cycle. So we already talked about the replicative cycle or the life cycle of HIV. It was quite simple. And we know that in this particular picture, you can see these tail like things, rod like things and spiral things. And then in between the two spirals, we have this structure. Now these spirals or the rod like structures are in fact the CD4 molecule. And in between the two things we have this red structure, which is the CCR5 co-receptor. So this is the CD4 molecule, while this one is CCR5 co-receptor. And this obviously is the HIV. Now we know that at first there are two interactions that takes place between the glycoprotein of HIV and the receptors of macrophage or our healthy cell. So this oval shaped thing is CP120 and it will interact with the CD4 molecule of the macrophage. And after doing so, we know that there is also another kind of interaction between the CCR5 and the GP120. After these two interaction, this HIV is able to fuse or enter within our cell in this manner. And then after this step, it will start releasing its content within the cell in this way, but we are only able to see the positive sense RNAs, two identical RNAs here, right? The rest of the things are not shown here. Then comes the next thing where this special kind of transcription takes place, which is known as reverse transcription. And in this particular reverse transcription, we get DNA out of these RNA. This is the viral DNA and then comes the next phase when this viral DNA enters our nucleus and it integrates with our DNA. So this step is possible due to an enzyme known as integrase while the previous step was possible due to reverse transcriptase enzyme. Right. And then comes the next thing where normal transcription takes place when this pro viral DNA will hijack our machinery and it will start producing two kind of RNA. So with the help of transcription, it will generate or form two kind of RNA. First one is genomic RNA. And we know that genomic RNA eventually becomes the part of the viral body or the progeny or the daughter HIV. But here we are only able to see the other RNA, which is the messenger RNA or mRNA. This messenger RNA will undergo translation. And as a result of translation, it will produce proteins, but they are polyproteins. They have to be cleaved with the help of proteases. Proteins that are produced with the help of this translation, they are polyproteins. They have to be cleaved. Now HIV has its own proteases, but it also takes the help of proteases that are present within the host cell or within this macrophage, right? And then after the cleavage, these proteins are in their active form. And after the production of all the required components for the formation of new daughter HIV, there comes the phase of assembly. They will assemble with each other. And this is the stage of budding. Then the step of budding takes place and this bud will eventually exit the macrophage in the form of mature HIV or the daughter HIV, as you can see on your screen. So we started from HIV and as a result, we got multiple copies of the original HIV. They are known as the daughter HIV, right? Now you can see many arrows here. We can stop or we can halt this procedure or the replicative cycle at many stages by using certain different drugs. So now we will talk about those drugs. Now we know that this particular virus HIV belongs to the category of retrovirus. So the drugs that are used against HIV, they are known as anti retroviral drugs, right? 
and there are many different categories of antiretroviral drugs we can start with the first one which is fusion inhibitor we know that fusion is possible due to gp41 now this glycoprotein you can see the structure of glycoprotein it has a rod like part and then this oval shaped structure the rod shaped thing is known as gp41 while the oval thing that is present on top of gp41 that is known as gp120 so gp120 is involved in attachment with the receptors of host cell while gp41 is involved in fusion that will ultimately allow this hiv to enter our cells so we are talking about the fusion inhibitors the first drug that comes to mind is enfuvertide as the name suggests it has fu in it you can memorize it in that way that it has fu the sound of fu fusion so this enfuvertide will cause problem for the gp41 of hiv it will bind with the gp41 and it will prevent the conformational changes that are essential for the fusion right so it will eventually prevent the conformational changes that are required that are necessary for this hiv to undergo fusion right so that was the first drug now if we talk about the next drug it also comes under the category of fusion inhibitor the name is quite difficult to pronounce it is ibelizumab now this particular drug is a monoclonal antibody as you can see it will interact or it will bind with the cd4 molecule or cd4 receptor and that will eventually hamper prevent the binding of cd4 with the gp120 so it won't allow the formation of gp120 and cd4 complex so you can judge that a replicative cycle would be halted here it won't proceed to the next step right so that was the second fusion inhibitor now we are moving to the next category of antiretroviral drugs as you can see on your screen it is the ccr5 antagonist now you can see a piece of rock here what if we place a rock between the gp120 and ccr5 if we place something in between these two molecules or the receptor ccr5 receptor and the gp120 they won't interact with each other and if they are unable to interact with each other the process would stop the virus won't be able to enter our cell right so why we used a piece of rock here as an analogy because name of the drug is maravi rock it ends with the sound or it ends with rock so the first one is maravi rock and there is another kind of drug which also ends with the same roc rock sound so that one is apla vi rock these drugs act as antagonist they won't allow the binding of gp120 and ccr5 co receptor right so next we can talk about the third category we have nrti the full form is obviously you can see on your screen that it is nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor now we know that there is a step which involves reverse transcription this unique kind of transcription where rna is transcribed into the dna right so we can also stop or halt the procedure at that particular step we know that if you look at this particular picture the first thing is reverse transcript is the enzyme blue one and then we have rna in red color and in light blue color you can see the dna we know that with the help of this reverse transcript is rna will synthesize dna right that's the reverse transcription so these kind of drugs work in a unique way or unique fashion how these nrtis they are the structural analogs of nucleic acid we know that the long chains of dna are formed by the repeating units which are known as nucleic acids the nucleic acids bind with each other to form the long chain of dna right so what if we place a structural analog a drug that is in fact a structural analog of nucleic acid so this yellow thing is representing a structural analog of normal nucleic acid now this drug will take the place of the normal nucleic acid and by doing so it will stop the creation of the dna it won't allow the next nucleic acid to bind with the chain of dna right so we can say that by putting this analog here we are stopping the formation of dna and if dna is not formed 
the whole replicative cycle would stop here, right? So I hope you got this point that we are placing a structural analog within the structure of DNA so that the formation of the normal formation of DNA is stopped. I hope this point is clear. Now we can move towards the next thing. But before doing so, you can see that there are many drugs that can be used as structural analogs. But the most common one is zero vudine. And then we also have lamivudine. So we can use many drugs that can actually act as the structural analogs of nucleic acid. You can see the list there. It's in alphabetic order, but the most common ones are the zero vudine, this one here and the lamivudine. So all these drugs are used as structural analogs or they are also known as NRTIs, right? Now we can move towards the fourth category, which are non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. And we can also form the abbreviation, which would be NNRTIs. So they also act at this point. They are the drugs that also create problems for the reverse transcriptase, and it tries to stop the whole replicative cycle at this point, right? So again, we can see that we have all the three things here, the reverse transcriptase, then RNA and DNA, but these kind of drugs have certain different mechanisms. They are not there to create structural analogs of nucleic acid. Instead, they create problem for this reverse transcriptase. They gum up the reverse transcriptase. They bind to reverse transcriptase. They are in fact gumming up this particular enzyme, the reverse transcriptase, so that it can perform its normal function of converting RNA to DNA or synthesizing DNA out of the RNA. So you can get the idea they are there to gum up the reverse transcriptase, right? And as a result, this step won't take place, the formation of DNA from the RNA, right? And there are many drugs. You can again see them in alphabetic order. And all these drugs are acting on the reverse transcriptase and they are halting or eventually they are stopping the reverse transcription, right? So these are known as the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Okay, now we can move towards the fifth one, which are the integrase inhibitor. This is pretty straightforward. We know that at this particular step, viral DNA enters our nucleus and it integrates with our DNA, right? But what if we use certain drugs that can halt or stop this process, right? They are the integrase stand transfer inhibitors. They won't let the viral DNA to integrate with the host cell DNA. And we have certain different drugs like raltigravir, and this is the most common one, right? So these drugs are acting as the integrase inhibitors. Lastly, we can talk about the last category, which is protease inhibitor. We know that at this particular stage, the protease inhibitors act, right? And they are there to cleave the long chain polyproteins into smaller functional proteins so that later on they can be assembled along with the progeny or the genomic RNA and they will eventually form the body or the structure of HIV, the new virus, right? But we are using certain different drugs these days that can inhibit the cleavage of the proteins so that they can be converted into active proteins, right? And we have many drugs, but the most common ones are Darunavir, then we have Indinavir, and then we also have Ritonavir. These are the most common ones, but you can see the list in alphabetic order. So I hope you can get the idea of all the categories of antiretroviral drugs. Here is the summary and you can see that the red arrows are indicating the spot or position where these drugs normally perform their function. And all these drugs, they are stopping or halting the replicative cycle at specific stage, right? So I hope this lecture was helpful. And if you like the content of this channel, do spread the word to others. Thank you for listening and thank you for your patience.